Presidential candidates of the People's Democratic Party at Tika Obaka yesterday mocked his counterpart in ruling all progressive Congress, APC Balatino, as a clown who was only fit to contest the post of Grand Comedian of the Federal Republic. Atiku advised the APC to immediately replace Tinubu following his seizing helpless gaffes to avoid further embarrassment. The PDP alleged that Tinubu was only suitable for the position of comic chief and never president of Nigeria, going by his error reading utterances, which signifies failing health. Atiku said in a statement that it was common knowledge that Tinubu goofed every time <clears throat> he came to the public space. The statement added that APC's seven and a half years reign was a side reminder of Nigeria's arrested development. Since 2015, when he came to power, he said Lagos State Governor Babajide Sanwolu claimed at the Lagos rally that Tinubu would lift Nigeria out of hardship and hunger was an indictment on the APC as an admission that indeed over 133 million Nigerians now live in abject poverty, as reported by the National Bureau of Statistics. Okay. Uh, Aya, what's your take on this? Right. Thank you very much and good morning. Welcome to a new week, Rufai, mm. Dr. Abatin, of course, um, everyone else. Now, interesting way to start off this week. Um, from the comments, especially saying that stating that the presidential candidate of the APC should be contesting instead for um, as a comedian. And um, one of the things, let me, let, let's go back to why the presidential candidate of the PDP would make such a statement. Going back to some of the speeches at campaign rally grounds of the APC presidential candidate, we have seen what could be termed as a slip of tongue, an error or mistake. But a number of people have analyzed this to say that errors or slips of tongues one too many. Uh, just um, on Saturday at the Lagos APC rally at the Teslim Balogun Stadium in Surulere, where there was a massive turnout as expected, for the APC presidential candidate. He had mentioned that people should get their APV or APC, whereas he was meant to say PVC to turn out en masse to vote. Um, earlier in, in, in Joss, he had actually referred, uh, when he was saying good, God bless, he was going to say God bless his party, APC, and he said PD, APC. Some of these things have been trending. At the Kadin, um, Kaduna uh, Investment Summit earlier in October this year, he had said the governor, who is a member of his party and one of his supporters, um, was turning a rotten situation to a bad one. So there are many what people would term as gaffes that the presidential candidate of the APC has made in recent times. We could, I mean, a, a, a human being is a human being. So you are allowed to make errors. You can make mistakes. You can, you might not be, for the sake of argument, an excellent orator or public speaker. And so when you're, you know, you're in front of people, you tend to make mistakes. However, unfortunately. This has brought into question the capacity of the APC presidential candidate to, to um, vie for the highest office in the land if he's unable to properly address people without making an error. Indeed, um, what they, uh, people have come, asked questions around other things, even beyond what he said at, um, you know, during speeches. And famously, the House of Rep Speaker, um, Honorable Bajabi Amila, had said, as, thrown as if challenging people who had mocked him or uh, made him trend on social media, saying that if they ask, they're asking a lot of questions, if they ask you who is Tunubu, tell them that he's, a, he's the greatest politician, uh, if they ask you how, what is his age, tell them to go and ask his mother. Funny and little things like this that politicians essentially should not use to distract the main issue. So oftentimes when we find candidates throwing jabs at one another, it then becomes a distraction to the main issue. The truth is that the office, the highest office in the land, is an important and critical one indeed. We have a country to fix. We have a nation that is not in the best state economically, health-wise, in different sectors. And so we're looking for the best man for the job. What we have said consistently and urged the candidates to do is to face the issue squarely, to address issues. Yes, you can make a comment about your candidate, but more than that, what should be making headlines this morning should be what they hope to do and the quality of the statements that they are making. Dr. Bati? Okay. It's as follows. In that statement by Frank Shaibo, responding to the presidential candidate of the uh, All Progressive Congress, APC, on behalf of his boss, the PDP presidential candidate. Well, I mean, I, I was shocked that Frank Shaibo has uh, such level of toxicity uh, within him because he not only threw kitchen intensives at uh, uh, Ashwa Dubola Metinumbu of the APC, he, he removed the whole sink and threw in his face. 
complete below the bed attack, slanderous, uh, you know, attacks, hate speech, use of foul language, use of indecorous uh, language, including saying that Ashwa Jubala Metinungu is looking for an automatic employment without going through an interview. He even uh, said he has to clear issues about his name, his identity, his education, and even hinted at uh, his connection with heroin trafficking and all that. I mean, I don't want to re uh, uh, you know, uh, restate all the uh, details, uh, even accusing him of dementia. Now, let's go to the basic principles. Again and again, the uh, uh, Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, I told this... Uh, politicians and their surrogates that look, hate speech, abusive language, foul language amount to a violation of the Electoral Act. And there are specific sections there, sections 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, uh, saying that in fact there could be penalties uh, for this uh, use of intemperate uh, language. The PDP may hide under the uh, cover that uh, Okay, they are responding to Ashwa Jubala Metinubu saying that uh, um, uh, vice, uh, former Vice President Atuku Abubakar is over ambitious and uh, ungrateful. And hence, they've come at him with, with uh, the kitchen uh, uh, sink and everything else inside the kitchen, including knives, and threw everything at him. But you see, we have to go to the basic principle that this business or campaign must be conducted in a civil manner, in a decorous manner, without, you know, uh, the politicians uh, abusing each other. Nigerians are not interested in abuse. Nigerians are interested in how they want to solve the problem that uh, Nigerians uh, face going forward. Uh, the uh, PDP spokesperson, uh, speaking on behalf of his boss, says, Oh, Ashwa Jibala Metinubu does not want to go come for a debate, and that they are inviting him to a full television interview. Okay, that may be an uh, excuse, but all the other argumentum ad hominem in that uh, statement, I think it's simply overboard. The second point is that this proves the point that uh, some people have made, that perhaps the surrogates of the uh, presidential candidates, their spokespersons, should also be made to sign peace accord because violence takes many forms. You know, sometimes uh, uh, some people can, can, can have diarrhea of the mouth that can cause uh, 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 violence. And which was why the INEC chairman was saying the Constitution, the Public Order Act, the Police Act, and also specific sections of the Electoral Act 2022 do not allow for the use of foul language that can cause public disorder. And unless INEC and the relevant agencies begin to apply sanctions under the law. You know, I hope this, this kind of situation will not completely uh, degenerate. Uh, the uh, Tinubu camp has not yet responded to this attack, but uh, I don't know what they are going to throw. Maybe they too will enter the kitchen and look for whatever weapons are still available and throw back. But that's not what Nigerians want. That's not what the guidelines and the uh, relevant laws uh, recommend. So maybe the surrogates we also have to sign a peace accord. The third point, uh, uh, the presidential candidate of the PDP was saying that, uh, oh, perhaps uh, Ashwa Jubala Metunubu should be given the honor of the Grand Comedian of the Federal Republic of uh, Nigeria. Well, the only man I know who bears that title, GCFR, is uh, Benga Adeyinka the first, <laughs> the popular comedian, you know, who's, who introduces himself as Benga Adeyinka the first GCFR. But maybe there is still space for that. But you see, as uh, a political uh, attack, I think it's a bit off color. And we hope that, uh, you know, language, the place of language in political campaign will be something that, uh, you know, both the uh, political leaders and their surrogates will pay specific attention to. It may provide entertainment, but it takes attention away from the major issues that concern us mm -hmm. as a people. It takes attention away from the priorities that Nigerians have defined and that we continue to emphasize and underline on this program, namely issues about the economy, issues about uh, infrastructure, issues about the future of Nigeria. I think when people show you they have believed them, 
And this is a representation of our political class. And these are people that want to run Nigeria, a country that, are, that is currently on its knees as we speak, a country that is suffering, that is choking, that is reeling from unemployment, poverty, but a country that has so much potential to do well because these same leaders disrupted that potential and ruined the prospect of the country. It is a sad reminder of the kind of political class we have. I condemn in totality the PDP campaign saying that the APC presidential candidate is a comedian. That's not the kind of rhetorics we want. If you want to disagree with candidate, disagree with them on the policies, on their issues. I would have thought that the PDP will write an op-ed about what they don't like about the APC manifesto. That'll be issue-based. But also I condemn in totality what the presidential candidate of the APC has constantly done, abusing his political adversaries. Words like they will labor in vain. Words like don't even mention that party. Words like tear tear umbrella. Words like that are not good. So now I'm condemning both parties. And I also condemn any party that will come and rain abuses in. As for gaffes, yes, the APC presidential candidate has made a lot of gaffes. Gaffes are a dime, a dozen now. Almost every outing, there's a gaff. But what is most important for me is that we need to have a process that is transparent. And that's why I'll say, going forward in our electoral process, presidential candidates must be able to submit to us medical reports. They must also be able to submit to us their tax returns. Because you see, if you want to get into a university in Nigeria, you will do medicals. And your medicals go to the university authorities. If you want to get a job, you do medicals. Why is it that for the top job, they cannot show us medical reports, and they cannot show us tax returns, and they cannot you know, be very honest and open with us as regards everything? So that's the way forward, to be able to settle all of this so that we can interrogate the candidates better. But please, I want the candidates to stay on the issues because this country is bleeding. And I'm very sad at the way the campaigns are going for 2023. I must express my sadness. All we hear every day, abuses, abuses, abuses. Enough of all of this. Can we talk about the issues? Can we just talk about the issues of the campaign ground and stop all these abuses? You guys don't even know children are watching. Don't you even know children, six-year-olds, ten-year-olds are watching? Is that the kind of morals you want to impact in the children? We need to do better. Isn't the suffering and the chaos going on in this country enough for you to only tackle the issues? Enough of all of this. And the surrogates that write all sorts of message. Surrogates are direct representative of the people that they surrogate for. Except we have the candidates come out and say, no, I'm not going to abuse the person. Even if I'm going to have disagreements with him, I'm going to have disagreements with him based on policies. And in case you don't know presidential candidates, please go watch the video of John McCain in 2008. When some supporters of John McCain were abusing Barack Obama and said he was an Arab, he was this, he was that. And John McCain picked up the microphone from them and said, no, he's not Arab. He loves America just like I do. We just have differences on policy and the way to run America. He's a good family man that loves this country. I think candidates should emulate the late American Senator John McCain things like this. Let's keep it clean. Let's keep it issue-based. And all of us, all the presidential candidates have aired as regards abuses. The APC, the PDP, other political parties. It is time to stop it and keep it clean and think of the nation. Nigeria first. Moving on to the next story, the federal government on Sunday announced the extension of resumption of Abuja Kaduna train services for another few days. Mwazo Sambo, the Minister of Transportation, made the announcement during an inspection tour of Abuja to Kaduna train station, stressing the extension was to ensure proper security measures were put in place. The suspended train services on the Abuja line were meant to resume on Monday, November 22nd, after eight months of suspending the operations following the terrorist attack on the rail line. Sambu said Nigerians have to provide national identification numbers before registering to board the train or when they buy through the counter. The 
number of uh, measures have been put in place in order to ensure that life and property will be secured when we resume services. And I'm satisfied with what I have seen. Of course, there are one or two, three areas that need to be addressed, and we're going to address them immediately. And we have not said the train services will start tomorrow. I want to be very categorical about that. Now, we have introduced a new system before you buy a ticket. Your purchase of a ticket requires you to provide a phone number and a national identification number in order to profile, because that is the beginning of the security checks. So at any point in time, when a train moves from one station to another, we know who and who are on board. If you don't have an NIN, you are not going to board our train. It's as simple as that. If you are a minor, an adult will pay for you, will register for you. And an adult can only register for not more than four minors. Now, we want to give sufficient time for the Nigerian public to listen to this, to, uh, 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 what do you call it, to, 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 to assimilate this new system. So if you if start tomorrow, a lot of people will be disgruntled. Ah, why didn't they tell us that this is a new way of doing it? Why didn't they give us adequate time to do it? So we want to give you adequate time. Definitely between three, four, five days, certainly not more than a week. Whatever is humanly possible to put to secure the lives of the users of this uh, service have been put in place. And we will continue to upgrade it. We'll be monitoring it on a daily basis and improve on whatever, wherever we find some snags. I hear a lot to chat about here. Yes, there are. There are many things to talk about. Well, kudos. Thank you to the uh, Minister of Transport, Moazu Sambo, for breaking that down. Um, indeed, we were looking forward to the reopening of the Kaduna um, Abuja rail line, especially since it's been closed since the 29th of March, a day after the, un the very unfortunate disaster on the 28th of March when the, there was a terrorist attack on a Kaduna bound train from Abuja. A number of lives lost, as well as um, some people kidnapped. Unfortunately, due to perhaps what he's trying to correct now, uh, there are many, there are various reports of the numbers, especially in terms of deaths and also those who were kidnapped. Famously, they said they wouldn't open that route until all those who were in captivity were released. Now, talking to the issues around the new requirement for the opening, first of all, let me say that it is important that when there's an update in the way that a schedule is operated, it is important to give users and the people an opportunity to have enough time to assimilate the information and not, as he has mentioned, be disgruntled when they get to the place of purchase and they find out that things have changed. In many, you know, many instances, unfortunately, this isn't always the case, whereby things are changed and we have little or no time to make adjustments and people are rushing there and then you know, we have, um, people are coming out and complaining bitterly. And so the, what, what has necessitated the move of the opening of the rail line from today to, as is mentioned, three to five days is important. However, I hope that they will take the time to actually do what they said they want to do, which is to have a massive campaign around this, especially around the safety and security of commuters using that rail line. Then moving on to the new guidelines following you know, the, the reopening of rail lines, which is that you must have your NIN, you must put your phone number. Now, this is up for debate as to how effective it would be in curbing or curtailing an incident, incident that happened on the 28th of March earlier this year, which is a terrorist attack. Unfortunately, when it comes to security and terrorism in Nigeria, it's a bigger issue beyond just providing an NIN or identification before you board a train. We have to ensure that the, we have security on the lines. We have to ensure that the bigger issues, because it, it, you, cannot, you cannot deal with terrorism in isolation. It's not just a rail line problem. We have a big problem in the Northeast that hasn't been decided, decidedly dealt with. If this isn't handled, even if they take the NIN, phone number, birth certificate and everything, we're still going to have these issues. And these are the bigger questions for the Minister of Transport to, and the security operatives to 
you know, respond to and to give an answer to. All right, Dr. Bati. Okay. <clears throat> On March 28th, we had that incident in which uh, eight persons were killed, 25 were injured, over 60 were abducted by terrorists who had laid explosives along the uh, track of the uh, Abuja train, Abuja uh, Kaduna rail line, and then all of that incident. Now, the uh, Minister of Transportation, Mwazu Sambo, was beating his chest and saying, oh, he deserves to be congratulated because he had promised that uh, the rail line would not resume services until uh, all the captives had been uh, released by the abductors. Well, he needs to be reminded that he's lying. Because the truth of the matter was that the Nigerian Railway Corporation had actually attempted to resume uh, rail line operations along that route on May 23. Yeah. It was because of public outcry and outrage that the NRC now decided, because people then said, look, people are still in captivity. There are no security guarantees along that rail line. And you say you want to reopen the rail line. So it's not his own wisdom that is at work. It was uh, the outreach and the outcry of the Nigerian people that led to that. Let's clear that. Now, the second thing is that uh, um, a few weeks ago, the Nigerian Railway Corporation then came up again with this promise that the rail lines will be... Uh, we resume operations in November. They didn't put a specific date to it, but people thought that will happen today, uh, November 28th. But what the uh, minister said yesterday when he visited the Abuja and train stations is that train services will resume along that route within the next seven days, not later than seven days. That's what he has said. And on that occasion, he tried to provide assurance that they are 90% ready. That was what he said. Are they 90% ready? How? He says, one, you know, security measures that have been adopted will start at a ticketing point, whereby uh, those who want to travel along the route will be required to provide phone numbers. And they will also be required to provide their national identification number. If they are foreigners, they will also be similarly required to provide uh, means of proper identification so that their profile could be uh, uh, determined. I guess the reason this is uh, being uh, adopted uh, is to know the identity of those who are going to travel on that route. If I was surprised, they didn't ask for birth certificate or marriage certificate, you know, if it happens that uh, couples are tra traveling. But they say where minors are involved, you know, their parents or, you know, their guardians can stand in for them. But that no adult is allowed to travel more than, with more than four minors. Okay, if we go back to the uh, March 28th event, the people who caused the mayhem, they didn't travel inside the train. They attacked the train while it was uh, in motion. They had planted explosives on the track. So it's not enough to just say you establish the identity of the passengers. How do you secure the rail line? What kind of surveillance system has been put in place to make sure that from point A to destination, you know, there will be no attack on those uh, uh, rail lines? That is uh, something uh, to note. Another thing that the minister said is that there will be now improved security, that there will be security people who will travel with the trains, and that these uh, security persons are likely to be in mufti. Okay? If they are in mufti, okay, would they, would they be able to make a difference? Considering the sloppiness of uh, Nigerian uh, security officials, whether it's the police or it is uh, uh, the civil uh, defense. And what is the implication of this for the available manpower uh, that we have? Now, number three, we're also told that, uh, you know, travelers on this route should prepare for increased fares. I think we need to know from what amount to what amount. All of that should be publicized. The average Nigerian traveler who will summon the courage to travel on that route must not be ambushed with a high cost of uh, travel. Another thing uh, that we're told of course, is that there will be no night travel, where this was one of the demands of the affected uh, families of the abducted persons who said, look, there should be no night train. Uh, but, well, the minister ended it that it's only God that uh, ensures security. But government must also play its part. And this is all about the Kaduna Abuja, uh, you know, uh, route. I about other routes in the country. The, Trains, the coaches of the Nigerian Railway Services have had issues 
close to uh, Ibadan, when some people had removed some of the rail tracks and the train had to stop somewhere in the, in the forest. There have been other cases of attacks, although of a lesser degree, on the train. So whatever is being proposed, it's not just to assure us that the Abuja uh, Kaduna line uh, is now safe and that security will be provided. There must be a comprehensive framework for ensuring the security of the rail lines and the security safety of passengers who travel on those uh, rail lines. The completion of many of these uh, rail lines uh, haven't been uh, touted as one of the major achievements of the Buhari administration. But as in aviation, the first law is safety. Yeah. And it's the safety of the average passenger that is important. That is when the Nigerian Railway Corporation will have succeeded in restoring the confidence of that average Nigerian who wants to travel by rail. Uh, the minister says he and his officials, they will be the first to travel along that route. We're not, they should not just travel once, so. they should travel along the routes regularly so that we will know, all of us will know that we are in this together. Okay. At first, I'd like to say my commiserations again and God rest the souls of all those that died in all of this that happened as regards the Cardona rail line. In these few months, I've been very close friends with Dr. Chinelo's father. That was the doctor that tweeted, I mean, that was the doctor that tweeted that she was dying. And some people, some supporters of a certain political party mocked her on Twitter. I just pray that they can live with their conscience. Because part of the things I saw, I also saw the burial ceremony of Dr. Chinelo. I was a bright Nigerian that wanted to look for greener pastures, but her life was cut short because she took Nigerian train. And for those that laughed at Dr. Chinelu, please, some information. Dr. Chinelu's father has not gotten over the grief. May the lives of Dr. Chinelu and others that died in this never be in vain. Secondly, I don't think we are ready to resume our rail services. We are not ready. And I'll refer you to something. When this happened, Minister Den Amechi said, the reason why this happened was there was a real security equipment proposal of 3 billion Naira that was rejected at FEC. And the FEC meeting was chaired by Professor Yemi Oshibaj on the 24th of September, 2021. And it was about one company called Mogja Nigeria Limited. Corporated on the 6th of August, they had back and forth. They didn't issue that rail surveillance equipment. I would like to ask the Minister of Transport, has that rail surveillance equipment worth 3 billion? Has it been installed on that rail line as we speak today? Secondly, ticket racketeering. So there's no even cor cor uh, correlation and serialization properly done of the tickets bought. To date, do we have an app for that rail service that you can pay and buy your ticket via app? Do we have an app that shows you the number of seats on the train and the number of the time the train will leave and how you can buy your tickets? Is it not still going to be riddled with ticket touts and all sorts of ticket scam is going on? <clears throat> so if we cannot digitalize the ticketing system, then are we truly ready? The minister should come out and respond to these two areas I have raised. And he should beat his chest that there's an app now at which you can buy your ticket online and everything is serialized and they know the number of tickets sold and they are not ticketing touts anywhere. And if you can come out to also tell us that that three billion, you know, surveillance equipment on the rail line has been perfected and has been done, and they have robust security measures in place, I'll say, yes, you have done a good thing, and we can start. But I hope this never happens again. And I also hope that surveillance equipment that Mr. Michi talked about has also been done on the Lagos Ibadan rail line and other rail services across the country. Those are just my two points. If the minister can answer those two questions, then I think we'll be rest assured. Uh, that's all on news headlines.